We're in Ezekiel chapter 5 tonight, if you want to be turning there. Who are Ezekiel's contemporaries? Daniel? Jeremiah. Daniel and Jeremiah are contemporaries of Ezekiel at this time. And God has given the nation so much time to turn. And, and the theme of the book of Jeremiah is return to me. God is crying out for his people to return, to return, to return. And yet it's falling on deaf ears and hard hearts. You ever do a study on the revivals in history, some of the major revivals? The Layman's Revival. Anybody know about the Layman's Revival? 1857 in New York City. The Dutch Reformed Church had a church in New York City that they were abandoning, and they left it to this layman to just hold a series of uh, meetings, prayer meetings. Jeremiah somebody. I forgot his last name. I'm sorry. Um, he started out, and nobody showed up. Then it was six men. But it was a very, very dark time in our nation. Unemployment was very, very high. Crime was high. I mean, it was significant social problems. And so God had the ear of a lot of people. And that prayer group that began with one and six, and then became thousands. And then there were prayer meetings that started all over the country as a result of that 1857 revival. But it began because those prayer meetings were actually centered around what aspect of prayer? No. What? No. Repentance. Every revival. If you study revivals and... And, uh, you know, there's so much information available to us today that you could just click away. But if you study all the revivals, they all were preceded by repentance, true repentance, where we felt the weight of our sin and our rebellion against God. And, and, and unfortunately, Israel did not come to that place of repentance. Their rebellion, their hearts were so hard towards God. But yet they thought they were okay. And now we come to this section of the text where God is going to prescribe the judgment that he's bringing upon them. It's a threefold judgment. And these are God's people. What, how many nations has God entered into covenant with? One. With, with all the people of the world through the new covenant in Jesus Christ individually, right? But as far as a national relationship, a covenant relationship. God only has a covenant relationship with one nation in the earth. And who's that? Are you sure about that? It's not the America? A lot of people are confused about that. Now, the, the biggest obstacles for particularly Ezekiel and Jeremiah, not so much with Daniel, was some of the other voices that were claiming to speak for God. And who were they? False prophets. Very good. False prophets prophesying that God has not abandoned Israel, that God still has a plan to make Israel great again. <laughs> but that wasn't the case, was it? No. We live in very, very, very perilous times. What happened yesterday? I'm sorry? Three explosions, three underwater explosions. Coincidental? No, no, nobody... No, no coincidence at all. Three underwater explosions that destroyed both pipelines, Nordstrom 1, Nordstrom 2. Russia, Russia, Russia. Does Russia stand to benefit by the destruction of these pipelines? No. Not in any way. But yet Russia's being blamed for it, aren't they? There's some other theories going around. That's right. And there's some information on previous statements that Biden and some of his cohorts have made that they would deal with the pipeline one way or another. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> Since the beginning of the Ukrainian war, which we actually caused, the United States, it's bringing us closer and closer and closer to a conflict, an outward conflict with Russia. We're fighting Russia now. We're in a war with Russia through our proxy, Ukraine. You understand that, right? The Russians understand that. 
And we, listen, we are very, very close to a nuclear war. Is that unthinkable? It's insane. But the world is insane, isn't it? Hmm? But I take great comfort in that our Heavenly Father is in control, isn't he? That what he allows and what he brings about is all in accordance with his perfect and complete and quite acceptable will, right? For not only our lives, for what he wants to do in this world. But it's quite obvious that this world has rejected him. Their ears are deaf, their hearts are hardened, far beyond what Israel of old was. I have a wonderful Christian doctor, GP. I had to see him the other day. And I, uh, I asked him, I said, tell me, you know, we have some good conversations when I visit with him. How do you explain these physicians justifying the mutilation of our children through these sex change operations for eight, nine, ten year olds? And he just shook his head. He said, it's just the, the morality the, among doctors is not there any longer. It's all about this. You know. The pro aborts are becoming more and more violent. You see that 84-year-old woman shot in the back yesterday? She was passing out literature. She's a, she's a pro-lifer, and she was just going door to door, just passing out literature, asking people you know, to, to read this, if you would. Think of Dana. You know. Uh, just passing out the literature, and then she came to one house, and this woman started arguing with her, screaming at her, and she just, you know, oh, you know, she just started to walk away. She started to walk away. Whoever, whether it was husband or whoever this man was, who ran in the house, got a gun, shot her in the back. Thankfully, it wasn't a good shot, but he shot her in the shoulder. But we see the violence that's being allowed all over the nation now against you. Fascists. That's what they think we are, don't they? Now, what are we supposed to do when they persecute us for righteousness' sake? Rejoice. 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 For great is your reward in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it is a very difficult, difficult time that we're living in now. And as I have shared with you and will continue to share with you, we are all very desperate in need of what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. There, there needs to be an outpouring, a baptism of the Holy Spirit again. Not just in the nation, but, but are you desperate for the Holy Spirit? Do you hunger and you thirst for a work of God again in your life? to empower you and to prepare you for those things that are coming? Prepare me for what you have prepared for me? And we, beloved, I'm going to be emphasizing that more and more. I was listening to my, uh, my I consider my pastor, Pastor Chuck Smith, although I didn't attend his church. I listened to him daily, sometimes twice a day. And uh, 1980, no, 1994, he recognized what was happening in the culture, and he said, our culture is, is so corrupt and in such a fall that if the Holy Spirit doesn't come and begin a revival once again, we're doomed to destruction. He said that in 1994. It's all true, isn't it? What, what percentage of the church read their Bible on a regular basis? 9% of professing evangelicals read their Bible on a regular basis. What does that say? Faith comes by hearing by. How many people go to church on a Sunday and don't even bring a Bible? The Bible's not even spoken of. Yeah, Joel Steen may hold it up at the beginning of the service, but after that, you'll never hear a word spoken from the word. That was Ezekiel's day, Jeremiah's day. Oh, they all claimed to be God's people, God's nation. Temple worship didn't decline. 
It's just that the paganism crept in to the church more and more. And if you haven't already, turn off your cell phone or silence it. Thank you. But we get into chapter 5, and we have already looked at this uh, judgment that Ezekiel had to play out in his life. Remember what that was? A day for every year of judgment. He had to lay on his right side, lay on his left side. For how many years of judgment were there? 340 years of judgment. And we looked at all of that, and we said, well, they did 70 years, and then we did some math, and, you know, figures don't lie, but sometimes we manipulate the figures. <laughs> But we didn't do that this time. But, but it was amazing how when we looked at that and God said that there would be 70 years of judgment, but if the judgment wasn't completed and they didn't turn, he would multiply their judgment how many times? And then we did all of the math, math, mathematical calculations and we said that, wow, the end of the judgment would be when? May 5th, the, the fifth month, which is May in the year 1948. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Beyond coincidence, hmm? Yeah. But now, uh, as Ezekiel was told to act all of this out, and he says, oh, by the way, Ezekiel, when you do this, I want you to shave your head and shave your beard, and I want you to collect the hair. It's a sign of mourning, a sign of humiliation, a sign of distress, a sign of disgrace. It's the shaving of one's head and one's beard. And he's going to tell him what to do with the hairs from his head and from his beard, because they're going to represent the people of Israel. So turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 5. And you, son of man, take a sharp sword, take it as a barber's razor, and pass it over your head and your beard, and then take balances to weigh and divide the hair. And you shall burn with fire one-third in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are finished. And then you shall take one-third and strike around it with the sword. And one third you shall scatter in the wind, and I will draw the sword after them. You shall also take a small number of them and bind them in the edge of your garment. And then take some of them again and throw them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For from there a fire will go out into all of the house of Israel." Now, he's going to explain to us in a moment that these judgments, are, these are all signs of judgment that God is bringing upon his people. The wrath of God is coming upon the people of Israel for their continual rejection and rebellion for his ways. How many of our politicians today claim to be good Christians or good Catholics or good this in some religion that they embrace, yet their lives are wretched? And they embrace everything that God says in an abomination. What's precisely what Israel was doing? You don't obey my statutes, my commandments, my testimonies, my word. You draw near unto me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. Boy, doesn't that describe today? If, if there was ever a need for a revival, it is today. I pray for one. We should all pray for revival. But, but I don't see any indication of an end times revival in the scriptures. Do you? No. I, I, it's just not there. Oh, okay, because it's absent, it doesn't mean I shouldn't pray. But you know, revival can occur in each of our hearts. In each of our hearts. And we each need to be seeking God and the power of his Holy Spirit as never before. If we're going to be able to glorify him and get through the days that lie ahead victoriously, not sitting and sulking and souring, having a pity party because our expectation or our desire or our dream wasn't met. But no, 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 no. In the midst of all of that, like Jeremiah, like Ezekiel, like Daniel, like so many others, we can glorify God in the midst of all of that. Like Jeremiah, I'm sorry, I don't remember his last name, in 1857. The layman's revival. It was a very, very, very hard time for the residents of New York City, for the citizens of the nation. It was as bad as the Great Depression, as far as the economic downturn. And yet, he was used of God in such a powerful way to turn many hearts and lives to the Lord. 
as he was so empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm desperate for him. Do you feel that desperation? Do you sense that desperation? We, we, we right now are in a spiritual desert, the church. We need to ask God to bring us to an oasis, a fresh baptism, a filling and empowering of his Holy Spirit so that we can glorify him in the midst of all the suffering. And it is interesting that all of these great revivals of the past paralleled tremendous suffering that was going on in the society. Interesting. Perhaps. Perhaps what we see lying ahead is going to give us the greatest opportunity we've ever had to be used of him to win souls to Christ. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yeah. How many little ones prayed to receive the Lord yesterday? Three. Three. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> good news. That's all good news and from the good news. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. That, that's who it is. Yeah, Lamfer. Yeah. You looked it up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And, then, and you know, after that, and, and I mean, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people that were saved during that time. And God used this layman to bring this river. The, the churchmen of the Dutch Reformed Church abandoned the church and said, yeah, why don't you just lead a prayer group, okay? And you're just a nobody. You're just, uh, you, you, how long have you been coming to this church? Okay, good. You, you lead the group. And wow, what God did, yeah, with a willing heart, you know, oh God, would you will to do it again, Lord? We need it. So the judgments are explained. Verse 5, thus says the Lord, this is Jerusalem, and I have set her in the midst of the nations and in the countries all around her. God determined that Israel would be the center of the world, the center of the nations, and all the nations would come to know God through her, that the center of worship of the one true God of creation would be there in Israel, in Jerusalem, right? We said the center of the universe is planet Earth, our solar system, center of the solar system, planet Earth, center of planet Earth, nation of Israel, center of Israel, Jerusalem, center of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, wow. All determined by God. But the world is not centered. <laughs> you heard that term before? A lot of New Agers use that term, centering, you know? Yeah, we need, to, we need to be centered, all right? We need to get our lives and our hearts and our actions and our desires all in line with who God is. Yes, they put Jerusalem all around, the center of the nation. But she has rebelled against my judgments in doing wickedness. What? More. Her wickedness was worse than the pagans who were around her. What, is, what does Europe say about our wokeness? Anybody know? They, they can't believe how woke we've become. They joke about our woke because it's so bad. Europe, we're far worse. Would it be a surprise if God used China and Russia to judge us? Would that be a surprise? Or would that be consistent with God's ways? It would, wouldn't it? It would. Do you know that, 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 that although Russia has very little to offer as an economic powerhouse. It's not. The, the only way they, uh, what, what, how they, how they're referred to as a gas station uh, on steroids, they, they provide energy to the world, and that's how they gain their income. That's, that's all it is. They're the world's gas station. Okay? But uh, as an economic powerhouse, they are not. But as a nuclear power, they exceed us in the nuclear capability. Do you understand that? And, you know, by the way, their nukes are so fast. What do we call them? Supersonic. Hypersonic. Hypersonic. We, we have no way to defend against them. No way. Impossible. Can you imagine? And now we've got this man backed into a corner. You know, he's in a desperate place. And desperate men 
do desperate things, and he's not thinking right. You know, there's been, what would they say, no less than six assassination attempts that have all failed. Why do you think they've failed? Could it be possible that God is going to use him? Did God use Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, surely he did. Yeah. God is the same yesterday. <laughs> Yet she has rebelled against my judgments and doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes, more than the countries that are around her. For they have refused my judgments and have not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations that are all around you and have not walked in my statutes, nor kept my judgment, or even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, indeed, I, even I, am against you and will execute judgments in your midst in the sight of all the nations. Do you think there's a parallel? Yes. What parallel? Somebody said yes already before I asked the question. This nation. Yes. Yes. There's a parallel. There's a stark parallel, sobering parallel between Israel of old and the United States today. What was, listen to me now, as we read the book of Jeremiah, as we read Daniel, as we read Ezekiel, we read Isaiah, what was God's heart towards Israel at this point? Huh? No, what was God's heart right now? Angry. He is angry. His righteous anger is ignited. And it's his wrath that he's pouring out upon these people whom he made covenant with. Oh, he's going he's gonna to save the nation for his namesake, not for their sake. Because he made a covenant with them unilaterally. He will, he will, he will. But he's going to judge these people. What did he tell Jeremiah no less than three times? Don't pray. Don't pray for these people, Jeremiah. Do not pray for these people any longer. I think the verdict is out and, and, and God is done with us as a culture. We're under God's judgment as a culture, but not the elect, not the church. We're not, but we're, we're still here. Yes, yes, yes. I woke up thinking, gosh, the Feast of Trumpets is come and gone, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> but there's work to be done. So perhaps next year. But we got a lot to do between now and next fall. <laughs> right? And I will do, verse 9, among you what I have never done, and the likes of which I will never do again because of all of the abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons in your midst, and sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgment among you, and all of you will remain, and I will scatter, excuse me, and all of you who remain, I will scatter to the winds. Now, we, we do know that because of the siege, they did eat their children. They ate their deceased parents. They would consume. Can you imagine such a thing? Are we consuming our children? Yeah. Look at the violence today. Look at the violence that is so easily done. There's, so no, there's no regard for the unborn, but there's no regard for the elderly either, you know. If you disregard life in any stage, eventually you re will disregard life in all stages. And that's what's happening now. Why is it that the hip, cool, contemporary church has no regard for the elderly? You don't see many seniors there, do you? Very few, if any, senior programs. They, all want to revere and exalt youth. Well, who else could jump around like that for two hours? <laughs> Verse 11, therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all of your detestable things and with all of your abominations, therefore I also diminish you. My eye shall not spare, nor will I have any pity. This is Israel he's speaking of. Where does that leave us? 
One third of you shall die by the pestilence and be consumed with famine in your midst. And one third shall fall by the sword all around you. And I will scatter another third to all of the winds and I will draw the sword after them. Those, those who escape and those who try to flee the city, they'll be chased down and killed by the Babylonian army. It's precisely what happened. You know, there are a lot of people talking about the fact that we're going we're gonna to have uh, some, some food deprivation here. Now, I know that there's definitely going to be starvation in some of the parts of the world. It's already occurring where there are parts of the world. Well, one good thing is there's going to be a beer shortage. You hear about that, right? <laughs> no? no the, the, yeah, you've got, you got to have wheat, right, to make beer. And the wheat production is, and we'd rather have shredded wheat than we would Budweiser, right? <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, because of the starvation that was taking place, they were consuming their children. We, we have a starvation of a different matter, a different kind, a different type. It's a spiritual starvation, but it's willful. And as a result of it, we're consuming our children. As I was saying to my physician, 50% are destroyed in the womb. And, and those 50% that come out of the womb, how, how many died last year of overdose? Young people? 107,000. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And then we talk about the epidemic of suicide among young people and, and, the, and the lostness among the young people now. No, no purpose, no meaning. No understanding of God. Yeah, so it's no different. What they did in the physical, we're doing in the spiritual sense. Verse 13, thus shall my anger be spent and I will cause my fury to rest upon them and I will be avenged and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have spent my fury upon them. Moreover, I will make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around you in the sight of all who pass by you. What's the, what's the attitude of the rest of the world towards us? We're a reproach. They hate us. They like our money. You know, they like our handout. They don't they like us. Right. And this is God speaking about Israel, whom he loves. Israel, whom he refers to as his firstborn. Israel, who he says is his only son. Where does that leave us? Now, someone say, well, that's, that's the Old Testament. That's the God of the Old Testament. Do you see less wrath in the Revelation? Or do you see more? Do you see a greater destruction? Now, the destruction we're talking about here is a national destruction, Right? Uh, previously, it was, a, it was the northern kingdom of Israel. It was limited to the northern kingdom. And, and now we're talking about the southern kingdom of Judah, and it's limited to the southern kingdom. But in the Revelation, the judgment is global. It's worldwide, far greater. And you have to ask the question, do you think we're in the end times? Is there any question about that? So if we're in the end times, then that whore, the spiritual whore, of Babylon. She, she has to exist now, doesn't she? Well, who is she? That, that's the question you have to ask. Who is the whore of Babylon? It's the United States, without question. Without question. Moreover, verse 14, I will make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around you in the sight of all who pass by, and so it shall be a reproach, a taunt, a lesson, and an astonishment to the nations that are all around you when I execute judgment among you in anger, in my fury, in furious rebukes. I, I, the Lord, have spoken. When I send against them the terrible arrows of famine, which shall be for the destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, I will increase the famine upon you and cut off your supply of bread. So I will send against you famine and wild beasts, and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood shall pass through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, I, the Lord, have spoken. How do we process what we know of God and the ways of God and how he has worked in the past with his nation, Israel, 
and what is happening today. Should, what, 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 let's have an open conversation here. Should we expect anything different from God? He's a righteous God. Now, what would bring about revival? What did we say precedes every revival? Repentance. True repentance. We acknowledge our sin. Take responsibility. But as in Jeremiah's ministry, as in Ezekiel's ministry, there were a plethora of false prophets declaring something totally opposite. And what were the people believing? The false prophets. Now, let me... Uh, I'm going to show you a video. I don't know these people. I, I, I don't even know who the pastor was. I, his name is on the YouTube uh, screen. Uh, but I don't know him. I don't have any out against him. All I want to point out to you is that we have false prophets beguiling and deceiving the people today with this make America great again nonsense. You want to make America great? Ask God to get America on her knees in repentance and we will become great. Who was the Frenchman that toured the United States and, and was trying to answer the question, what has made them so great? And he said, I went all over the country and until I went into her churches to discover her greatness is in her worship of her God. We've lost that, haven't we? As we have turned from God, it is quite obvious. God has turned from us. Don't, and, and, and my, my responsibility now is to prepare you emotionally, intellectually, mentally, and spiritually for what's going to happen because we're going to be astonished at what God's going to allow. And it can happen like that could, tomorrow morning. <sighs> Wake up and say, wow, hey. So as you're watching this, I, I, and, and we're going to have a discussion, I want your opinion on whether you think these people are really speaking for God or not. Because there's a huge number of people following this crowd. Open your mind, listen, and think critically. Okay? In of 2000, I was in our, our Wednesday night service, and uh, I was about to go up and, and preach, do the message. And I walked to the platform, and a wave of dizziness hit me. I literally, at times, uh, staggered around the room because I, I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't even, I could really not focus at times. And I, be, I, I knew early that on that, that God was trying to impart to me his heart for America. And it was, as I look back often, I was like, you know, why didn't I feel anger? Why, why did I feel love and a broken heart rather than his wrath? I didn't feel wrath. I felt the love of of a father for a prodigal. And I know at one point, and I know you're not supposed to let the flag touch the ground, but I was out of control, okay. I went to the, over in the corner and I, I grabbed a flag we had and I wrapped it around me and I laid on the floor and I sobbed and I knew I was crying with, with him. I knew we were crying together for this nation, Gene. And it became so intense <clears throat> That at one point, I said, and I meant this, this was not hype or I'm not trying to be sensational here. I said, God, please, you have to stop this because my heart is literally going to break and I'm going to die. And I said, please don't kill me. Now, I get, you know, sometimes you just get in a situation that you think God may not know what he's doing, you know. <laughs> But I was afraid. I, I was hurting here. I thought, my heart is going to break. I'm going to die. So for three and a half hours, this happened. And here's what he said to me at one point. 
And I know this, is, this was God. And I could never, ever, ever be convinced this wasn't God. He said, I must have this nation. I must have this nation back. I'm not moved by what they say, because I know the love in my heart for America is not a pride. It's not a we're better than someone else. It's not we want more than anyone else. The love I have for this nation was put there by God. And here's what he said to me. For what I'm going to do in this hour in the nations of the earth, the harvest that I am going to reap, I must have this nation. I learned a long time ago about the American dream that what we did is we took God's dream for America and perverted it into American dream that's all about things and all about being the biggest and the best and the pride that came in. And I'm proud to be an American and I sing it and I cry when I sing it, but I'm not proud to be an American because I want to be the biggest and the best. I'm proud because I know God raised up a nation under him with his heart to spread the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ to all the nations of the earth. Our destiny is not over. He is going to save this nation. And a third great awakening is coming to this nation. And it's going to give us the transformation that we need. There is at least the harvest that's coming is at least a billion soul harvest. At least! This is not coming. We're not asking him to do this and fighting with him for what needs to take place in order for that harvest to happen. We're not doing that to try to talk him into So We're not trying to convince God, come on, do this. We have this passion because of his heart. to give the nations as an inheritance to his son. And he said, I will do this. I promise you, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, that's what he said. And I'm going to tell you one more time. It will not be stopped. America will be saved and a great worldwide harvest is coming. Amen. And they say inflation shall arise. Yet I look from my heaven 
And I say, even though they speak inflation and inflation, it shall seem for a moment in America that it shall arise. Yet I shall take my fist and I declare from my throne it shall be declared inflation. For I will flatten it. I will deflate it. I will break it. And God says, they will say, what? And what has happened to your Federal Reserve? Amen. Because I will raise up something new. I will raise up something greater. And God says, I will cause your economy. Because in the United States, there is a resilience and my anointing that has been placed upon you. Therefore, there shall be an early cold, an unusual cold that shall come in a very unusual places in this nation. And they will say once again, what is the meaning of this? And God says, I told you before with the heat that this is the work of my hands to show you that no man controls the climate or the spiritual climate of what shall take place in this land and in the earth at this time. And as the cold spell, so it would seem, seem to last and grip, watch where it grips, it would seem as though it will not end, but then suddenly it will lift. And you will say, what is this? For we've had enough of the heat. We've had enough of the cold. And God says, that's what I'm looking for, is to hear my people cry out, enough is enough, that you will turn unto me, says the Lord. God says, get ready, for you will say from your mouth, we have never ever seen this before. This has never happened in my lifetime or even what I have read. Because God says it is time to dream again, because I am turning the captivity of this country. And you will say from your mouth, look at what the Lord has done. He has done great things for us. And God says your shouting has caused great damage from the very heart of this nation. And I say as it was in the days of Moses, the Egyptians, I spoke to them and said the Egyptians that you see today you will not see again. And God says, this is what I speak of. There are things that the enemy is trying to grip you with, America, with socialism and communism, and they will lose their grip, and this country will never face it as it has been in this season. Were the walls ever rebuilt, says the Lord, in the days of Jericho, they are falling. And you will even see one who will arise in this time, and they will say, for they are afraid of them, those who have lied. And they will say, when this one arises very soon, what shall we do now, this one who has risen, who spoke lies that is now telling the truth? For they will shake when this one was considered and even was a foe shall now become factual and shall run their mouth, open their mouth because of my fear that shall grip them. Come on, shout unto God one more time. Shout unto God one more time. You know, the Lord showed me something today in, in Judges 6 that it reminded me of. hear me now? Okay. 
I'd like to know what he did with his eyebrows. <laughs> but this is precisely what was happening in Jeremiah's day. There were many, many, many false prophets who were prophesying what the people wanted to hear rather than what God was doing. And that's what's happening today, beloved. So be careful. There's, there's no message of repentance there. Did you hear that? Did you hear any re cry for repentance? And, and who are they looking for? A political savior. There's a man who will arise. And you know who that man is that they're looking to. <laughs> now, what happened? And these are the same false prophets that said Trump was going to get reelected. He was going to win re-election. Did he win re-election? No. 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 So then they had to adjust their prophecy. Otherwise, they should be stoned, right? Yeah. Now, I, 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 as this false narrative collapses, there's going to be a lot of people who, who generally are seeking the Lord who are going to be shipwrecked, heartbroken, devastated, and ask the question, why, Lord? Now you're going to be able to give them the answer. This is that which the Lord had spoken in his word. Be very, very careful because this is an age of deception where if it were possible, even the elect themselves would be deceived. I, I, the best of men? So if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me what they're saying is true. It rings true to your heart. The Spirit is confirming it with you. <laughs> and it gets worse. It gets worse. Did he really think that he was speaking for God? Yeah. Well, no, he was prophesying. That's a prophet. He was prophesying. And then in the middle of the prophecy, give God a cheer. You know. But you... See, we're, we're, we're immune to a lot of this that's going on, but this, this is sweeping the church. It is. A lot of people are being beguiled, being deceived by this. Because, listen, they're being led by their emotions, what they would desire, rather than their thinking, what the Word of God has to say. It's been going on for decades. It's been going on for decades, but we're hitting a crescendo in all of this. You know, the Brownsville Revival... Rodney Howard Brown, you know, all of that craziness that was taking place. And all of that being used of the enemy. Now, you, you may even see some amazing signs and wonders being done. But they won't be done by God. God's going to allow the enemy to perform signs and wonders to deceive even the elect if it were possible. Say, say it again. Signs and wonders are happening from God. One's happening in Florida right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Lord's giving plenty of signs. They said this is the worst hurricane to hit the peninsula in 100 years. No, there's been lots of hurricanes. What was the last one you talked about? Homestead Andrew? Oh, my goodness. That was bad. But this is worse than Andrew. Yeah, so, I mean, just in what I saw taking place in Naples before we came together tonight, it's horrific. Yeah, but the storm surge, I mean, cars completely underwater, homes flooded. I mean, it, this, the, the destruction. It emptied Tampa Bay earlier today. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. No, I didn't see that. Oh, Somebody told me that. Tampa yeah. Can you imagine that? Sucking the water out of the bay. I mean, there were people walking on the bay. Yeah. Stupidly, because it's coming back. Oh, yeah. did, did, anybody read the, did anybody read the report about the pulsating taking place in Yellowstone? It's miles, miles wide of pulsating yeah. in Yellowstone. You see, you got, there's, there's some signs and wonders occurring. You're right. Yeah. That's right. But not what, not what they're talking about. Now, for us, it's irrelevant. Isn't that true? We're saved. You know, every time I go to the doctor, what's the question his assistant asks? Have you been depressed lately? <laughs> I said, why would I be depressed? I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. The doctor will be here in a minute. <laughs> now, 
Now, the, now listen to me. The more and you get into the word and the more you see the reality of what is taking place, his perfect love will cast out all. There's no reason for us to be afraid. We, we see what's happening. We have the answer. And we know we're just passing through. But in the meantime, we need to share the truth with as many people as God would give us the opportunity. And we're our sharing, our testimony, our witnessing, our words will be effective when we're under the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. I need him like never before. Holy Spirit, fall upon us all. Empower us first to love. To love the unlovable. I have a hard time with that. I, I'm just being honest, you know? I love people that love me. I love people that are easy to love. But there are some people it's just difficult. And so that's where I need God. I need his love for them. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I want to pray, too, for a while. Uh, we still have some time. We have another, oh, 20 minutes or more. 